We're going to start in Jeremiah chapter 20. Uh, we're really looking at chapters 36, 37, and, and 38, but uh, I want to start in, in Jeremiah 20. The title of my message is The Battle for the Bible, and uh, you'll, you'll see why when I get to uh, the later chapters. You know, Jeremiah had the privilege and difficulty of being a prophet. <laughs> God would give him a message, and he would tell the nation, many times he'd write it down, and oftentimes the people didn't like the message that God was sending. <laughs> and they would blame Jeremiah. Plus, you throw in that there were people who were giving false messages that the people liked a lot better. And uh, Jeremiah had a very difficult life. You read through, through the book of Jeremiah, and uh, you'll have a lot of sympathy for him. Basically, Jeremiah just said what God told him to say. Let me read. I want to kind of try and show you his heart here a little bit in Jeremiah 20, starting in verse 7, and I'll read down through verse 13. O Lord, Thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, say they, and we will report it. All my familiars watched for my halting, saying, Peradventure he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, that triest the righteous, and seest the reins in the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them, for unto thee have I opened my cause. Sing unto the Lord, praise ye the Lord, for he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of the evildoer. If you don't read it now, but as he goes on, he gets even more uh, uh, down in, into the depths. But you know, it was a difficult task that God had given to Jeremiah. And you know, many times we face the same thing. Sometimes you'll just share with someone a, a simple Bible truth. And boy, they'll go up and turn left, you know. They, they get upset with you. It's, a, it, it's an interesting world we live in as to what people will believe and won't believe. And, and it's not changed. <laughs> when those false prophets would come, people would say, oh, good, good message. But when Jeremiah would come with the word of the, from the Lord, uh, you'll see how often they treated him. Now, let me show you this, this situation in Jeremiah's life starting in Jeremiah chapter 36. Jeremiah 36. When I was reading through Jeremiah recently, I thought, uh, I believe the Lord would just have me to preach uh, from this book, and so we have been for the last few weeks. Uh, I almost didn't this week. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not preaching Jeremiah this week, but uh, I just couldn't, couldn't not. In verse 1 of 36, you see that this, is, uh, that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord. In verse 4, here's what he did. Then Jeremiah called Barak, the son of Neriah. And Barak wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord which he had spoken unto him upon a roll of a book. So he had a secretary, Barak. And as God would give Jeremiah the words, Jeremiah would say them, and Barak would write them. That's called inspiration. God breathed. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. That's 2 Timothy 3.16. In 2 Peter, he says, Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. It didn't come by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. This is not just people writing about God. This is God revealing His Word through men. It's an amazing book, the Bible. Well, some people, when they read what... Jeremiah had Barak write out, uh, verse 15, they said unto him, sit down now and read it in our ears. 
So Barak read it in their ears. Now it came to pass when they had heard all the words, they were afraid, both one and other, and said unto Barak, we will surely tell the king of all these words. The king needs to hear this. They were afraid. They had a reverent response. Is really what happened. They took heed. It made a difference to them what God had, had said. And they thought the king would want to hear it, but let me show you in verses, verse 22, when the king heard it, he had a completely different response. Verse 22, Now the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month. There was a fire in the hearth burning before him. It came to pass that when Jehudi had read three or four leaves, he, that's the king, cut it with the penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Yet they were not afraid. See, this is a completely different response than the other people had. They had a reverent response. You know, we talk about in our modern day, cut and paste. Well, this was cut and burn. <laughs> uh, he had an irreverent response. He didn't, he didn't like that message. He didn't want people to, to read it again. Uh, I wanted to, to say this because um, as a church, uh, we've chosen to use the King James Version of the Bible. And one of the reasons is that many of the modern texts take out different verses. Uh, if you look in the NIV at, James, at uh, Acts 8.37, you won't find it. There's verse 36, there's verse 38, and, and they're honest about it. They just leave the number 37 out. And there's many verses like that. And the problem is, that there's three reasons. I wanted to give it to you this morning, and this is just in passing as we go here. There's three main reasons we use the King James. One is the, the text. Uh, many of the modern translations uh, come from texts that, that have been changed. I was reading a, an article by um, Henry Morris. If you know that name, he was more or less the founder of creationism in our modern uh, day and age, you know, people that, scientists that teach creation. And uh, he said that the Hebrew text uh, was changed by a man named Rudolf Kittel. You know, we use the Masoretic text uh, for the King James Bible. Uh, they've, they've changed it. He said he was a German rationalistic higher critic, rejecting biblical inerrancy and firmly devoted to evolutionism. His, his main thrust, of course, is creation. And he said the two men responsible for the modern alterations in the New Testament, uh, Westcott and Hort, and then he named some, some other people as well. He says, all these men were evolutionists. He says, Westcott and Hort, although they were Anglican officials, uh, promoted spiritism, uh, racism, and denied biblical inerrancy. Now, that's just one reason that we don't use other versions uh, is because of the text that, that they use. But it's also because of the translators, uh, the ones that then took that text. Uh, I don't think they had the same reverent attitude uh, that needed to be there. And, and as well, the, the method. They used a method called dynamic equivalence. It's where you, you translate it as you think it means, rather than a, a direct translation. And the problem with that is it lets theological bias uh, come to the fore. And uh, in several cases, uh, I would say maybe many cases, uh, the blood, miracles, the deity of Christ uh, can, can be taken out. As I read this, it just made me think of that. You know, we don't want to cut things out of the scriptures. God has inspired his word. And we not only have the inspired word of God, we have the preserved word of God. And that's so important because after that king cut it up, look at Jeremiah 36, verse 32. You know, if God can write something once, he has no trouble writing it again. <laughs> Jeremiah 36, verse 32, it says, then took Jeremiah another roll and gave it to Barak the scribe, the son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book which Jehoiakim king of Judah had burned in the fire. I've always found this next part interesting. And there were added beside unto them many like words. <laughs> That's, and furthermore, <laughs> I've got some more to say on, on this subject. Uh, God not only inspires his word, God preserves his word. As Christians, we believe that God communicates. God communicates specifically. And uh, our God is not only able to give us his word, he's able to keep it. And we believe that we, ha we have that. You know, many att attack, you know, that, that's one of the, of the devil's basic attacks is to attack the, the scriptures themselves. You know, you read in Genesis, hath God said, one of his very first things. And when you have 
all these different approaches to Scripture, you know, the world says, oh, how can we believe that? And yet God is able to not only give us His Word, uh, but to preserve it. We have God's inspired, preserved Word. Well, that king, and let me give you this verse, Matthew 24, 35. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Now, I've always found it interesting. He doesn't just say my word, just talking about it in general. He says, my words. God keeps it. Well, that king was named Jehoiakim. He was killed, and he was replaced by a man named Zedekiah. He says to, to Jeremiah in chapter 37, verse 3, and Zedekiah the king sent Jehuchal the son of Shealmiah and Zephaniah the son of Maasiah the priest to the prophet Jeremiah saying, Pray now unto the Lord our God for us. Now, when I read the scripture, I, I kind of think about the situation. I look kind of behind the scene. And he, he's saying, you know, the world oftentimes will say that to us as Christians. Pray for me. But the thing is, they mean it so generically that it doesn't really mean much of anything. It's like when you, you say, God, you know, save everybody and, and keep everybody safe. Well, you know, it's so general, God can't, can't actually answer that prayer. Um, and the king is saying to, to Jeremiah, pray for us. He's more or less looking for a good word from the Lord. You know, we've had some bad words. We, we want some good words from the Lord. You know, the world doesn't mind us praying as long as it's a ceremony. We've had lots of ceremonies over the weekend, haven't we? And there's probably people read prayers and, and lots of things. But let me tell you something. Jeremiah knew how to pray. Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, back in Jeremiah chapter 8, th there's a lot of things we could, we could read in, in light of this. But Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 18 is a, a famous statement uh, as Jeremiah is, is talking to the Lord. Jeremiah 8.18, when I would comfort myself against sorrow, my heart is faint in me. Verse 20, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. As Jeremiah prays for Israel, he prays for himself. He's, he's part of them. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I'm black. Astonishment has taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Jeremiah is open and honest in, in his prayers to the Lord. And as, as Jeremiah prays, Jeremiah gets an answer. He prays and he hears from God. Look in uh, Jeremiah 37, verse 6. You know, when, when we pray, we pray based on God's Word. And uh, the world, when they tell us to pray, they don't necessarily want an answer based on God's Word. Jeremiah 37, verse 6, Then came the word of the Lord unto the prophet Jeremiah, saying, now, now listen to this, verse 7, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus shall you say to the king of Judah that sent you unto me to inquire of me. You remember when you were a kid, you'd send your little brother in to ask your parents something, you know? Ask him if we can do this, you know? It's like the king has, has sent Jeremiah. He said, okay, I've got a message. I've got a message for this, this king. Listen to it. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt into their own land. That army you're counting on, they're leaving. Verse 8, And the Chaldeans shall come again and fight against this city and take it and burn it with fire. Thus saith the Lord, Deceive not yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans shall surely, surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. For though ye had smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, and there remained but wounded men among them, yet should they rise up every man in his tent and burn this city with fire. <laughs> That's God's answer when uh, he, the king sends Jeremiah, pray for us. What, what's God saying now? Well, when uh, they hear that message, at the end of verse 13, they say, thou fallest away to the Chaldeans. Uh, you're a traitor. They don't stop to think, this is God's word. They just, they just blame Jeremiah. And in verse 15, uh, they put him in prison. Wherefore, the princes were wroth with Jeremiah and smote him. Put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe, for they had made that the prison. Uh, not, a, not a very nice response. I, I'm glad that's not the response I get most weeks to my sermons. <laughs> uh, throw me under the, the bus or something. Uh, he prays and he hears from God. But they say, hey, that's not what we wanted to hear. 
You know, many times that's our attitude toward what the Bible says. Well, look in, in verse 16 now. When Jeremiah was entered into the dungeon and into the cabins, and Jeremiah had remained there many days, then Zedekiah the king sent and took him out, and the king asked him secretly in his house, Is there any word from the Lord? <laughs> the king still wants to know, but he just doesn't want to know people. He doesn't want to let people know that he wants to know. He wants to hear what's going on. Is there any, is there any other word from God? And Jeremiah's immediate answer, there is. For said he, thou shalt be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. Others hear about this message. Uh, and they want worse punishment for Jeremiah. They, they want to kill him, actually. And in, in, verses, in chapter 38, uh, they, they really want to do Jeremiah in for this message from God. And they end up in, cha in chapter 38, verse 6, putting him in a dungeon... I didn't know whether to say this was a better dungeon or a worse dungeon. It depends on whose, whose perspective you're taking. Uh, this, this was a terrible dungeon, verse 6. Uh, then took they Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malachiah, the son of Hamalek, that was in the court of the prison. And they let down Jeremiah with cords. And in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. Can you imagine just being dropped in a mud hole under a, a building? Uh, Jeremiah suffered just for saying what God told him to say. Hey, you might think your, your lot in life is difficult as a Christian. I don't think any of us will experience what, what Jeremiah went through. Fortunately, there were some, some brave men. They're part of the rest of the chapter uh, in verses 7 through 13. ebed Melech, an Ethiopian. They get some men together. They go to the king, and the king says, all right, get him out of there. And so they lower some ropes, and, and they... You know, pull him out, <laughs> out of the mud, and uh, it was a blessing for, for Jeremiah. But look at chapter thir 38, verse 14. Then Zedekiah the king sent and took Jeremiah the prophet unto him into the third entry that's in the house of the Lord. And the king said unto, unto Jeremiah, Ask thee a thing, hide nothing from me. He's basically saying to him, Is there a, is there a different word from the Lord? <laughs> can't, can't you just give us something? And, of course, Jeremiah says, yes, there in, in verse 17. Then, Jeremiah, then said Jeremiah unto Zedekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, If thou wilt assuredly go forth unto the king of Babylon, Babylon's princes, then thy soul shall live, and this city shall not be burned with fire, and thou shalt live in thine house. He basically says, if you'll surrender, you'll live. But, verse 18, if thou wilt not go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, then shall this city be given into the hand of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and thou shalt not escape out of their hand. Uh, God's message to Israel at that time was not the message they wanted to hear. C can I say to you this morning, uh, the message of the Bible is still a message that people don't want to hear. But you know, the Bible s compares itself to a hammer and to a sword and to a, to a light, and if you'll share God's word with people, initially they may not want to hear it, but when God breaks through into their soul, they'll thank you. They'll thank you for sharing God's word with them. You know, there's, there's records of people who persecuted Christians who got saved. Hey, one of them was named Paul. <laughs> Modern times as well. People, I read a story about a man whose job was to go break up home churches. And he, they just beat the tar out of him. And he said he beat this one woman so badly and he just couldn't believe it. A month or so later when he went to break up another church, there she was again. And he thought there must be something to this. He eventually became a Christian himself. You know, when you share God's word, people don't always want to hear it. Jeremiah went through some, uh, some terrible times and there was times when he resented uh, that. And Jeremiah gives Zedekiah the message from the Lord. Verse, verse 24, Then said Zedekiah unto Jeremiah, Let no man know these words, and thou shalt not die. Don't tell anybody, and I'll let you live. Listen, the world, the world often uses bits and pieces from the Bible. Doyle and I were noticing yesterday, we kept hearing different little phrases from the Bible as people would talk and, and so on. It's just part of our world but they don't want to hear from the Lord. 
They don't mind the little, little phrases. Uh, but as Christians, we take it seriously. This is God's word. Uh, this is not just something that we uh, use casually. You know, Jeremiah heard from God. We've heard from God. God has revealed himself to us. Do you realize that's, that's how we know about God? When people don't go by God's word, they have all these strange gods, mean gods, uh, uh, unfaithful gods that you, you have to worry about doing the wrong thing. Listen, our God will always do the right thing. And we know that. Our God is good. Uh, don't look for something else. Don't look for some hidden message. Just read it and take it as it is. Uh, let, let's, let me make some applications this morning. Number one, hear what God says. Now, to do that, you're going to have to either read it or uh, hear it. Hear what God says. I, I began to notice as I read Jeremiah the phrase, Hear ye the word of the Lord. I, I don't know how many times it's in there, but it, it must be 10, 20, 30 times. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Uh, like Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 4. Hear ye the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob. Or chapter 10, verse 1. There's, there's several between those. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Hear the word of the Lord. We need a message from God, and He's given it to us in His word. In our day and age, we can print the Bible. We can have it on our phone. You know, it's readily accessible. You can punch in the, the reference, and boom, there it is. You can even have it read out to you, you know, if you can't read. I don't know how you'd punch it in if you couldn't read, but anyway. Uh, hear what God says. Hear what God says. David said, Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. You know, don't just use it as a band-aid. Use it as it is, the very Word of God. And then secondly, don't decide what you believe based on the pressures of the world or of people. You know, that, those kings, uh, they just wanted a good word from the Lord. Well, the good word from the Lord was surrender. You know, do what God has, has said. You know, there's a lot of pressure in, in our society. And it's amazing as you look back through cultures, the different things that come up is important. Uh, there's no uh, uh, understanding it, really. There's the pressure of society. There's the pressure of consequences. You know, sometimes you think, man, if I believe that, I might lose my job. You might. But let me tell you something. Better to be without a job on the Lord's side than with a job and standing against the Lord. Listen, someday this whole world is going to be a cinder. <laughs> you talk about global warming... Uh, it's not going to be here anymore. And uh, God is going to, to judge this world. Don't decide what you believe on uh, society or consequences. You know, we sing a song, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. It's talking about being bold, being brave, you know, taking a stand. Do that. You might have to do it at school. You might have to do it at work. And I'm not talking about being mean or unkind. I don't think Jeremiah was. They'd ask him, what, you know, what has God said? Here it is. And the response then is, is up to other people. Believe what God says. Thirdly, speak the truth in love. You know, the message we have is exactly what people need to hear. Paul wrote in, in Romans chapter 1, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. If someone's going to get saved, it's going to be by the gospel of God. That's what they need to hear. Listen, a person can go to heaven without being a member of our church. <laughs> a person can, can go to heaven without knowing me or you. But they can't get to heaven without knowing Jesus Christ and being a part of Christ. Uh, we need to speak the truth in love. That verse comes from uh, Ephesians chapter 4. And I thought it would be good to see the context. Right before that, he says, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. He's saying, don't listen to the world. Don't let the world push you around. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into Him in all things which is the head, even Christ. God wants us to grow up into Him. Be a part of Him. Be like Jesus. Speak the truth in love. Everybody needs to hear the truth. And you know, sometimes it's so hard. Yeah, I'm the same. I get the opportunities to talk to people. You think, oh, should, I, should I lay the truth on them here? <laughs> uh, it's hard. People don't always want to hear. But they need to hear. And it's the only way. As I thought about this, I thought about John chapter 20, verse 
verse 31. Really, we need to rem remember what it's all about. The Bible says in John 20, 31, But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. That's what it's all about. God made us to know Him. We sinned in Adam and we're separated from Him. God sent the second Adam. We're going to be singing Christmas songs soon. I love that verse where it says, Second Adam from above. That's Jesus. A lot better. <laughs> A lot better than the first Adam. And Christ died for our sins that we could be saved. That's what people need to hear. That's what it's all about. That's why God has given us His Word. Uh, that's why God uh, was manifest in the flesh, came as a man, died for us, rose again, that we might have life. Faith is believing God's Word. That's why the Bible is so important. Faith is believing God's Word. Let me ask you, like John says there, have you received life through Jesus' name? There's none other. The world thinks it's odd when we talk about being born again, and they've distorted it to mean other things than what it really means, but uh, you need to be born again. You need to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. God's Word needs to be important to you. Peter wrote that we're born again by the Word of God. I don't believe you can, you can be born again without the Word of God. It's what God has used uh, to change us to, and to, to make us know about Jesus Christ. Jeremiah heard from God. Have you? <laughs> Jeremiah had a hard time because of, of his message. You know, we can sit in our homes and read the Bible. We can contemplate on it. Uh, what a blessing it is. We live in a free country. Uh, that could change. But right now, we're, we're free uh, to believe what we want. Let me encourage you. Believe God's Word. He wrote it down so you wouldn't miss out. You know, it's not just passed by word of mouth. And when we read this Bible, the King James Bible, that's not translated from some other translation. You know, it's not Chinese whispers. Uh, they go back to the Greek and they go back to the Hebrew and, and they, they write it out for us to know in, in our own language. Man, I, I would be pretty hard pressed to read it in Hebrew or Greek. I couldn't. I can hardly read it in English. <laughs> but uh, God knows. And God through His Word and His Holy Spirit communicates to our hearts. Think about Jeremiah. And you'll think, boy, I've got it easy. You know, whatever your situation is, we can believe. Because of men like Jeremiah and Paul and, and John who, uh, who suffered so that we could have the Word of God. And this morning, you can, you can apply it to your hearts and lives freely. You can receive salvation freely because Christ paid the penalty for your sins. Let me encourage you this morning. Uh, believe God's Word. Hear what God says. Speak the truth in love and remember that it's all about knowing Jesus. Someday, <clears throat> I don't know, we talk about you know, coming to the, <clears throat> the pearly gates. I don't know that this will physically happen, but uh, if you were to stand before the pearly gates and they were to say, why should we let you into God's heaven? Let me tell you that the answer had better be, I come in the merits of Jesus. It's not going to, what does it mean when we say cut the mustard? It, it, it's not going to help if you say, well, I was a member of Fellowship Baptist Church. You're going to say, what about Jesus? I, I knew people who thought they were Christians because they were Americans. I know people who think Americans are devils. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to be in our merit. When you stand before God, it, it had better be, I come in the merits of Jesus. He's my Savior. And you know what? Jesus will bear fact to that as well. This is, my, this is my child. Come on in. If you don't know Christ as your Savior this morning, you can. He, he's not playing hide and seek with us. He wants to know you. He's given you His Word. His Holy Spirit is here to help you. Now, Christians are here to help you. Now, God wants to know you. That's why He made you. Now, these are written that you may might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. We're going to sing a song. It's not a normal invitation.